Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. What's up? Woo! And today we have a very special guest who is in studio with us again. The man, the it's myth, been the legend. Kind of not that long since August we had you last, the end of yeah. August. So this is we're Joshua all, Lewis. Yeah. We were all coming over, getting over the Rona. So we were all like, it seems like a while ago because we were all like, yeah. we were, it was like a blur. You know, yeah, you were like three shades of yeah, a different I color. I almost died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost died. <laughs> not because you came, but no. <laughs> right so ghosty, no, almost good. died. Yeah. All right, but Joshua, Basty. would you like to no. give a short, a quick introduction of yourself and what yeah. you do? Yeah, uh, my name is Josh Lewis. Started Remnant Radio in 2017, uh, which is a theology podcast that interviews pastors and teachers from all over the world, from different churches and denominations. We interview people on theology, history, and the gifts of the Spirit. Um, so uh, our whole goal is to help you break side outside of theological echo chambers. I'm a charismatic myself. I love the charismatic community. Uh, I believe that all the gifts of the Spirit are for today. Uh, but I also acknowledge that our community is pretty well known for being anti-intellectual. Mm. So we want to help expose people the best way to think, in my opinion, is to expose people to the most educated thinkers possible mm -hmm. and then have them wrestle through those those different teachings and different thoughts. Yeah. Um, and if we believe the Spirit's going to lead us and guide us in all truth, why not listen to what the Spirit has been saying to and through the churches for the past 2,000 years? Mm -hmm. So that's what we attempt to do on the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, history, theology, and the gifts. Yeah. yeah cool. So you guys can subscribe to Remnant Radio. That'll be in the description below. But today we are going to be talking about love. No, I'm just kidding. We're not talking about love. We are going to, but then Joshua's like, discipline. everyone talks about love. So we're going to talk about discipline. No. But we are going to talk about um, church and we're going to talk about the local church. And yeah. there's a lot of people who the debate, is that even a thing? Can you biblically say that? I thought it was just like the universal church. Um, well, Bible talks about love, right? yes, but anyway, we are going to first pray. So yeah. would you like pray. to pray? Should I pray? Yes. All right. Father, just thank you so much for this day. Thank you for Joshua and just for remnant radio and mm -hmm. all that they do. Uh, there's such a blessing to the body of Christ and just pray. You'll just continue to bless his, uh, his uh, podcast. And Lord, we just ask right now you guide our conversation as we talk about the church. We know you love your church. You died oh, for the yeah. church. I pray that we'd have a right perspective, that we wouldn't just want uh, people to be at our church because I'm a pastor because it's my church, but it would be because we want people to be part of your body so that they are committed to becoming disciples, not just hearers of the word, as it says in James, but effectual doers. That's our prayer. Yeah. We want to live the word of God. We want to, as Paul, as Paul said in the Galatians, we want to see Christ formed in people. We want the metamorphosis, the change. We want to see lives turned right side up because of the power of your spirit. And as uh, we heard today, that uh, you shall know the word gnoskos, to not just know about you, to not just know the word of God, but to know the God of the word. So God, please do a work today. Speak through Joshua. Speak through us. And I just pray that you would just really, our desire is, like we said, the gifts. It's for edification, exhortation, and comfort. That that would be, wouldn't be to be, hey, look at me, I'm the big prophet or I'm the big healer, but just to really bless your body because... Uh, you said, uh, as we learned last week about foot washing, as I've served you as your master and teacher, how much more should you serve your brothers and sisters? And so help us to do unto others. And you said, if we do that, if we serve others, we will be blessed. We'll be happy. And so, God, that's our desire, that we would serve people the way you have so lavishly served us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so... In regards to that topic, sure. what would you say to someone who's just, hey, I don't need a church body because I'm part of Christ Church. I'm the a Christian. Universal. And some people are like, hey, I like the worship here. I like the fellowship here. I like the teaching here. So I go here. I go to these big conferences. What would you say to that person? Sure. For, first, we have to realize that the Bible is written in a biblical context, right? Um, we can't look at our world and then look at the Bible verses and try to transpose those verses into our context and assume mm -hmm. they fit one-to-one -one correlation. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a church of Ephesus, but there wasn't the first, second Baptist church of Ephesus, the Presbyterian <laughs> church of Ephesus, mm -hmm. uh, the Pentecostal church of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. There was the church of Ephesus, right? There was the church of Galatia. And, and many of these um, churches were um, uh, plurality of elders and plurality of locations, right? Mm -hmm. Many of them were house churches that could sit 
anywhere between 40 and at times up to, I think, two or 300 people, mm-hmm. uh, depending on how large the portico was and the climate in that space at that time, right? So um, as the the gospel is going out, um, uh, people are, are converting, they're submitting themselves to elders, right? In Hebrews, there's a command to submit yourselves to mm-hmm. your elders who will one day give a charge, right. give an account yeah. for for the shepherding over your soul. Now, um, You're doing, is that Hebrews 13, 70? I believe it's yeah. her, Hebrews 13. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we're called not to neglect the, the sacred assembly, and we're also called to submit ourselves to the elders of a local church. Um, now, when you when you look to those contexts, uh, what's really important um, is that the way that so much of the church functions, um, church discipline, um, the way that uh, uh, the gifts of the Spirit function, mm-hmm. these all assume a local body, right? Uh, when you excommunicate an individual, mm-hmm. where, hey, there's an individual in your midst, he's sleeping with his father's wife, um, this is sexually immoral, you should purge this sexually immoral person from you. The community should know that this person is no longer allowed to take the table, uh, this person is no longer allowed in fellowship with the community until repentance takes place. Mm -hmm. Who determines when repentance takes place? The elders should have done some kind of investigation uh, and released to the community of faith, hey guys, this person has Mm -hmm. repentance, this is the fruit of that, we've been walking with this person, we're now bringing them back into this community. Um, uh, the fact that, um, you know, when we gather together, we're supposed to do certain things, uh, like in, in, in the church of Corinth, for example, um, if chapter 14 clearly illustrates, um, that, uh, their unbeliever will fall on their face in the mm-hmm. corporate gathering God's and declare words. God is among them. Mm-hmm. So there are unbelievers at, at church, and yet there are believers who take the table, mm-hmm. right? What's the distinction between the one who takes the table, one who's in communion, and one who's in ex-communion, not in the communion fellowship, right? Mm-hmm. That's an unbeliever. We make distinctions in that and saying that you're a member of this local body. Mm-hmm. Now, certainly I would say that there is the church Catholic, which again, is an allergic term for many, that mm-hmm. the word Catholic just means universal. universal yeah. It's mm-hmm. part of the creeds. We all believe in the universal church, um, that God has worked through by his spirit through all people throughout all time in history. Um, uh, we, we believe that that call of redemption has always been present. Um, but um, the local church, right, um, is uh, a body of believers that have gathered together under the mission of Christ Jesus uh, to, to preach the gospel, make disciples, baptize them, uh, practice the sacraments of most of the, the, the historic um, um uh, catechisms, uh, you know, like the, the confessions and catechisms will say things like the church is where the gospel is rightly preached, mm-hmm. uh, the sacraments are rightly administered, and church discipline takes place. Yeah. So if you're in a community and you guys just hang out and have fun and talk and <laughs> chat, you're in a fellowship group. You're not yeah. in a church. Um, if you're in a community that uh, likes to open up their Bible and read, but allows sexual immorality to take place rampantly amongst your community and you turn a blind eye to it, mm-hmm. you're not a church. Yeah. If you are so gathering... So what you're saying is there's a lot of churches that aren't churches. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of people <laughs> saying that they're a church and masquerading mm-hmm. as something that they're not. Um, but of course, you know, I'm a dinosaur or whatever I identify Because a lot is, of people aren't doing, aren't doing church discipline. That's right. And mm-hmm. I would affirm that if you cannot say, I am not that, then you are nothing. Mm. Right? If you if I say I am a boy, well, what does it mean to be a boy? It <laughs> means I am not a girl. Yeah. Right? Wh- yeah. Which means I am saying when I say I am this, I am by definition saying I am not that. When mm-hmm. I create a criteria of definition, you must say that you're not something else. Yeah. Right? So if I'm trying to figure out what a church is, if if the, 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 the sacraments of communion and baptism are not rightly administered in a local church, it's not a church. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that that's a shocker for most evangelicals mm-hmm. because... Um, we, we have this concept of Bible only, which again, love the Bible, big fan of the Bible, teach about it, talk <laughs> about it every day. Um, but historically throughout church history, it is those elements that foretell the death, burial, and resurrection. They tell the story and we live that out sacramentally. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's something I think that we miss out on often. But historically, those are the concepts that, that hold a local church together. Church discipline, the preaching and teaching of the word, and, and the sacraments. So again, you can take, you can eat and, and drink some grape juice and some bread, uh, uh, but if you're not teaching the Bible, you know, again, you're just a fellowship group. Yeah. So yeah. you need all three of those components um, to be a church. And certainly a church yeah. is more than that, uh, but it's certainly nothing less than that. But like either. you were saying, discipline, like warning, like I, I just, I was in a hurry 
It, yeah. You know, two service and I was a hurry. The first service, so I didn't get. I usually give the warning of First Corinthians eleven, mm-hmm. take it unworthy. And so I was like, you, you didn't do the warning, you know. Mm-hmm. But I was saying, don't take it unworthy. Many yeah. every week and sick and even sleep. Yeah. You know, what I mean, that kind of needs to be warned because we we think, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, I love what one pastor said at Calvary that it was John, but he said uh, we. We, we get that we put down the Catholics because they actually believe it's because of the body and blood of Christ. But we take communion way right. too lightly a lot of times as Protestants. Yeah. We don't realize that we need to deal, confess our sin, make sure we're yeah. right uh, before we just take it haphazardly. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I would I would deny the, the Roman Catholic transubstantiation, yeah. but I would affirm mm-hmm. uh, what Calvin and Luther and many others, though that they would nuance it in different ways, um, is that there's something really present. Yeah. yeah. No one he dies. Would also have conf- he would have the Saturday night, right? Sure. Confession. Yeah, no, no one dies from a symbol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If communion is just a symbol, yeah. why are people dying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, when that dude touched the Ark of the Covenant uh, and Uzzah reaches out because you're not carrying it in a, in a worthy manner, yeah. it strikes him dead. No. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can't tell me that communion is this holy thing that people are dying because mm-hmm. they're carrying it wrong. Yeah. And it's just a symbol. So there's something, there's something powerful. There's something more uh, for mm-hmm. those who are listening that that aren't catching the scripture reference. That's First Corinthians chapter ten that talks about taking communion in an unworthy manner. 11. Some have eleven. 11. You're right. You're right. And some have fallen asleep. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's those kinds of things. I'm very passionate about it. I think that when we talk about local church community, we're talking to a generation of people mm-hmm. who are consumeristic, yeah. who want to find the coolest, best mm-hmm. um, aesthetic. Yeah. For them, when those are never things the Bible commands us to do, mm. so find coffee, the place that has the, not the, the bumpiness music, <laughs> the most attractive, you know, uh, worship leaders, yeah, yeah, yeah chicks, you know, whatever, group. you know, you got, you've got uh, uh, smoke, you know, machines and, and really cool lights. Nowhere in the scriptures are we uh, told how to choose a church based off of aesthetics, yeah. Yeah. right? We, we're looking for the historic Christian faith. Yeah. Okay. So part of this is consumerism. I can just go to this church until I don't like something. I, I went to Walmart for a while and then I didn't really like the aesthetic, the music mm-hmm. and started shopping at Target. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, uh, you know, Target started supporting things I didn't want. So I just moved over here. Mm-hmm. So when you become a part of a local church, you are committing yourself to a body of believers mm-hmm. uh, to faithfully live among them, to yeah. edify them, to live your life sacrificially for their benefit. And they are likewise committing that to you yeah. within that relationship, within that commitment. You've also committed to submit yourself to the church elders who will give an account yeah. for your soul. Yeah. Now, if we treat church the way that we do in the 21st century, not the way they do in the first century, mm-hmm. what we'll do is we'll go from church to church, thinking that we're a Christian, never submitting to an elder mm. and that elder, how is he going to give an account wow. mm. that that pastor is going to stand before God one day and say, what did you do with uh, 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 Zach over there? Cause I didn't even know that guy was in my church. Yeah. So had no clue. That's so let me funny. ask you, Judge, because you yeah. really had a good point. So, because it's where I'm at. You know, I've been yeah. at a big church, as I said. We're a small church. If everyone showed up, maybe 300 max, maybe 250, 300. Sure. So a small church compared to right, that's most people's Bible. like this, Matt, you're a church's Bible study. Sure. But I mean, how do you have a big church and really have that relationship? Because there was big churches. Ephesus was a big yeah. church. But how do you... How do you fix that? Because, you know, like you said, you can't help. Like, you know, when Matt Chandler shows up, everyone wants to come. But how do you... So what's missing? You know, when Jesus shows because, up, because there's, you a, don't, there's a, a community of 5,000 yeah, following yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But it's like, because you, you would Smaller, say that's lacking in a lot of churches, right? Yeah. I mean, the, what I say, what? the discipleship and really and knowing an elder, elder knowing yeah. the body. I would say that there's tons of small churches where discipleship is lacking, and there's lots of big churches where discipleship is lacking. Yeah. Um, and it, would, the, the, it comes down more to integrity to me than size. Mm-hmm. If if you are in a position... And a priority, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, if, if what I will commend Matt and the Village Church for doing um, wonderfully is that they were a church that was so large, they had so many campuses, they realized it yeah. was the right thing to do Just to not have an empire, but to spend these campuses off as local autonomous yeah. churches. Yeah. Because there were issues that were taking place where uh, maybe there was a, a sexual scandal. And this isn't why they did this. Yeah, they, yeah. they were doing this a long time ago. But consider this as an example. Yeah. Um, someone, there's a sexual scandal that happens, right? Well, why is it Matt, you know, CNN reports, sitting down with this woman? He's not her elder. Mm-hmm. She has her own elder over her own local church, but because village is on the sign, there is an assumption of his responsibility over that. We're talking about 20,000, 50,000 people that yeah. he's, he's given an account for. No, you know, these churches are set up in a way where there are local church elders who are responsible mm-hmm. for these people. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what we should do. And we should take ownership of that where, um, when as an elder, if I'm confronting someone for their sin, if I'm confronting someone because of something that's going on in the local church community, it's like, I have to give an account 
I'm going to be careful because you are God's sheep and I love you and you're being conformed to the image and likeness of Christ. I'm not coming down on you. I'm not trying to, to well, create a perfect holy church. I just know that Jesus wants all of you and he wants the best for you. And I want to do everything I can to help you get there. Mm -hmm. And if that means confronting sin and having uncomfortable conversations, that's what I got to do. Mm -hmm. But if you're just coming to my church, like I would, I would assume, you know, you'd have a person show up to your church first time that they've ever been there. Mm -hmm. Right. And they show up with their, you know, it's a guy and he shows up with his boyfriend and sits on the back mm -hmm. row. You probably don't sit down that with that guy mm -hmm. on day one and have mm -hmm. the same conversation you are doing with the person who shares the table with you. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Right. There are different levels of, okay, of responsibility. Yeah. Uh, like first Corinthians 14 says, we're going to have unbelievers in our midst, yeah. but I'm going to hold them to a different standard mm -hmm. that I'm going to the people I consider brothers that I live in, you know, mutual submission to, mm -hmm. because that's again, a biblical passage, submit to one another. Um, but there's also a different submission to eldership. Uh, and then those elders are giving an account one day for how they lead. So they need to serve with a measure of humility as well. And this mutual submission is the beautiful cyclical cycle that we even see within the triune nature of God, right? The father gives the glory to the son. The son gives the glory to the father. The, the spirit, spirit wants to glorify the son and the father, right? Yeah. It's like this beautiful cyclical mm -hmm. pattern of, of, of they, they call it par not paracresis, but, uh, 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 it doesn't matter. It's a big Trinitarian word yeah. and the theology guys yeah. will bust my chops if I yeah. say it wrong. So this, yeah. this beautiful, uh, mutual, uh, worship and edification yeah. and glorification within the Trinity. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're meant to embody that. Yeah. I think the local church is meant to live in willful submission, not an elder saying, everyone listen to me, I'm your boss. Mm -hmm. And not a bunch of people who are blindly following saying, yeah. you know, I'm going to listen to anything that you say. It's just this, this kind of lively, um, interdependent, um, mutual honor, respect, and independent. I mean, dependency is such a great word. I know that we don't want to be dependent, right, on one another, yeah. but the body is built up by every yeah. joint and yeah. ligament. Mm -hmm. So I cannot look at a person who attends my church as um, uh, an option. Like they're actual a necessity. Yeah. Like I need what they have. I need the pancreas. Yeah. I need it. Yeah. And, and we've got to stop looking at people as expendable yeah. and, you know, they don't really fit our vision. So, you know, kick rocks. No, like, mm -hmm. like they are essential to the development of the body mm -hmm. of Christ. And when we live in that mutual submission, I believe God is glorified. Yeah. And, and I know that there's real strong calls right now for, for no church membership, but in an mm -hmm. age where no one has accountability. Um, marriage, marriage is on the rocks. What, is, what does marriage commitment look like uh, in, in a home? Uh, what does it look like to be committed to a workplace? We have transient workplaces. We work somewhere for three years and then we move somewhere else and yeah. we work there. The 20 years uh, is gone now. Nice. The, where, if, if they don't learn it in the house of God commitment first, mm. they're not gonna learn it anywhere. Yeah. So, so saying, hey, um, when I commit here, what I'm saying is I'm going to live a life of devotion and honesty and openness. Uh, I'm going to confess my sin when I'm wrestling with stuff. I'm going to live my life open and free before the body. Yeah. And we're going to live in mutual submission to one another. I, I, I'm going to trust you not to lord authority over me. And, and, and you're going to trust me not to be a pain in your butt as, I, <laughs> as you lead me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because Teach that's what you. Hebrews yeah, is yeah, talking yeah. about, right? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. please just yeah. don't be a jerk to your pastor, mm -hmm. you know? Make it a yeah. joy. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did I think Spurgeon said? Happy pastor, happy church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like basically, no doubt. Treat me like dirt. Huh? You won't be happy. You screaming, yeah, except you scream. And I scream happy. anyway. You're yeah, scream. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's really good. Like you're saying, especially for young adults in our culture, because nowadays you want to pick and choose what you like. And that's why I think people are not committing to people because of social media. Like, Oh, I can find better. or This might show up or this mm. might pop up. Oh, I just found this Joshua new church in my, in yeah. my Instagram feed. Like what about checking this out? And so what would you say again to maybe people out there who there may be committed somewhere in the fact of they'll call that their church home but they're still wanting to like go to a church for their things or fellowship. How as a church, like for us, if that's happening and we're seeing this and maybe more, not saying, oh, you're a distraction or you're a crow, sure. but do you think they explain, should go to the, the crow or like a crow you is just, this. A did you ever see lessons from my sheep talk the book? Uh, yeah. From it's a, you gotta explain. Cause if you're going to crow, what's your, it's a guy, it's a guy from Canada. It's in Canada. Yeah. 
but he has he's a professional shepherd he 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 has a bunch of sheep and so he's saying he's saying how the what is the what's the dog from babe the movie the australian, australian shepherd. shepherd the black and white with the blue eyes. dogs but those dogs are the smartest dogs and so yeah. what yeah. happens those are really protective and crows he said would swoop down and act like gonna attack the sheep so he'd chase mm -hmm. the crows all day so he's saying that's a lot of us as pastors is we so busy chasing the crows sure. they wouldn't have time to tend then he'd be tired they'd be tired to really herd the mm -hmm. sheep mm -hmm. and so he's saying we have to discern the difference between a crow and a sheep sure so we have to say crow no, you don't want Jesus. You don't want truth. You need to go. Yeah. But and but we need to really tend the sheep and care about those who are truly confused. So, and so that's that's what Philip you mean by Colin. crow. So I just want to yeah, yeah. assume that. And I'm not know saying that. like you can't because that's the whole thing. As like example, our young adults, if we do a hangout somewhere or we go witness or do ministry down at the U of A and someone wants to join us, like for us, we're like, OK, that's fine. But if we see they're constantly coming for like those type of things and it's making it where it's like, we don't know you, like you're not really letting or us get to know you. Or we see people that come for, two, they come they come for, for like, two or three months. They're gone for three or four months. Because we had this one come, person tell us. We have people come two or three times. They yeah. just, and they go, we're, I'm a part of your church. I'm like, dude, you haven't been here well, for my like question six months. Too What's is, the deal? You know? I've heard people say, especially young adults, they said, well, I think it's fine because if I found a spouse here, and I kind of want to get into this because this is another oh, big thing. shopping. Yeah, if I found a spouse. We're not going to church there. Mm -hmm. If I found <laughs> a little hot chicks here. If I found yeah. a spouse here, I think it's fine if I'm at my church and they're there. Yeah. Why is that unbiblical also? Or just what do you think about why that? Is that? stupid? And then also, <laughs> what do you think <laughs> about people doing that? What do you think about young adults feeling like they don't believe that God? I always say, I'm like, do you believe God's sovereign or not? Like, can he not bring? But I know sometimes I'm a little too extreme with that. But what would you say to that person who's like, but I want to go here just to see what's sure. going so, down. So um, when we talk about a church, okay, um, we should not think of a church as a commodity that we add to our life. Mm -hmm. Okay. First of all, and, and what happens is we're going to say, well, I'm going to this church because um, they, um, they, uh, they help me think about how to, you know, conform my life. They, they like uh, when you go to church, you are there to worship God and edify the body. Yeah. So you're there to give and to worship, right? Mm -hmm. So I, and I would say you are to receive, but you're there to receive the gifts of God, mm -hmm. receive God's word, receive communion, receive the sacraments. You're there to receive, um, what the good gifts that God has given us, yeah. you know, through his local church, certainly. Um, but we don't need to look at the church as a commodity. Now, now there are lots of parachurch ministries. I'm one. I think this is one, you know, mm -hmm. for, you know, there are people who are not at your church watching this program yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, and, and I, again, will steal another phrase from my pastor. We want these kinds of ministries um, to be supplemental, mm -hmm. right? You, you don't go to, to the them, gym. Bring them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take a bunch of creatine, but yeah. you don't eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, mm -hmm. right? A supplement is not sufficient, mm -hmm. right? It can, it can edify, it can encourage, it can help build mm -hmm. you up, uh, but it can't be church because church is the place where you learn to love, to forgive, mm -hmm. to fight. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, like you, if you can't fight well in the church, you, you are not going to, um, you are not going to emanate the glory of Christ, the image of Christ that we should, mm -hmm. the kinds of conversations Jesus had were difficult, mm -hmm. right? Like Jesus, blessed are you, Peter Barjona, mm -hmm. man has not revealed this flesh and blood has not revealed this. You know, my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You're not going to the cross. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Satan, right? Yeah, right? Like 10 seconds yeah. later, you know, the apostle Paul to Peter's face rebukes him yeah. before all. Because okay. That you are not in step with the gospel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Some mm. former Taliban member confronted the greatest known Christian evangelical to his face publicly before all the, for all intents and purposes, the leader of the known church was rebuked by a former terrorist, <laughs> right? Like that's, that's what we're talking about. And those kinds of conversations yeah. mm -hmm. can only happen in church yeah. mm. because in church we have committed to love each other. And mm. I know that if you're rebuking me, it's because you love me yeah. and you, you can't stand to see that thing in me. Yeah. Right. And I know that, that, if you are rebuking me with that spirit, it's at your best interest and it's going to affect my flesh, but we're going to have to work through that. Yeah. And maybe, maybe you've said it in a way that wasn't helpful and, mm -hmm. and we got to work through that. Sure. But the kinds of things that you deal with in family, 
Like I'll put up th- with things with my brother and sister. I won't put up with anybody else. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. the kind of spirit we need to have in church. And if we have this kind of commodity idea of, well, you know, you know, they, they preach a lot of sin there. So I'm going to go to this other church. Right. Or, Hey, uh, you know, I think there's, there's nothing wrong with saying, and, and this again, personal opinion here. I want a spouse. I'm going to look in Christian spaces. Like you, you want to go to church on Sunday and go to a club on Saturday. Is it like, I don't think the alternative is much better, Mm -hmm. but like you would be hit by the, your wife goes to one church and you go to another church. Oh no, 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 no. no, It's hard to be a priest of your home. If right. You get two different. No, no, no. Yeah. If you're, um, no, your, your family goes to church together, right? You keep, you keep the Sabbath day. Holy. That's a, that's a thing. My kids get that. I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm here, you know, on a Sunday, my wife took the kids to church on her own. Um, but you would not fly here and leave your wife. No, 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 no. But like, but what you're, you're talking about membership yeah, again. Yeah. And, the, and those are things that I'm, I'm fighting for. Um, I'm, I want to fight for faithfulness. I want to fight for more. I want to fight for community. Well, I want to see people love each other. Well, and it, you can't do that if you're hopping from place. And to like place. you guys said last night about prophecy, cause we have a lot of people come in as a big prophet to tell us what's wrong with the church sure. and we don't know them. They yeah. have no credit yeah, where no you're saying like prophetically, especially mm-hmm. in community, you need to know if someone's, if I give you a word that's kind of hard, sure. you need to know that I love you and I have a crack record and I'm tr- yeah. right. You just don't let some joker speak into your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and so that's important Absolutely. too, to really know, to be, to know and to be known and to have that to where you trust people. But, but a lot of times, I, you know, I always used to, when I first, one of my first sermons as a little young Christian was bubble Christianity. Like you don't touch my sin, I don't touch yours. And that's even more so today. That's 40 years ago. So it's like, we really need to kind of, get off the facade and really say, Hey, I want to, I want to be known and I want to know, and I want to submit to hopefully God. And like you said, godly leadership that basically if I come, I just pretend you're sure. not an elder, but if I come to you as an elder to say something. I should have biblical backing. It shouldn't be this is yeah. what I feel. I should yeah. be able to say, I, f- I see this because of this the and the word. word. Of God says, and then you yeah. can judge it and say, I don't think that means what you think of me, right? Or you mm-hmm. can say, yeah. wow, you're right. And mm-hmm. we need, but that comes through trust of knowing, but when people are bouncing, you know, and I yeah. think too, I don't know if you agree, but a lot of people bounce because they don't want, like you said, there wasn't a million churches in the early church. Yeah. So they couldn't just, you couldn't just go down the street because they would, and, and there, even in this town, I mean, I came here in 86. If someone was in sexual morality and kind of just bounced on the church, we would, P- church would call us and yes. we yeah. just had it now we yeah. don't do that there's not at least in this town doesn't mm-hmm. have, but it used to have where we missing. go hey you know yeah. josh is you know i mean if i'm, I'm no, saying no, but okay. you know hey so and so is insane you need to know this that yeah. they're bouncing i think to your church and then i'd say you got to get right you got to get back I'm, you know i'm a close table guy right i don't pastor a church so this is an imaginary position but um i i think if i pastored a church i would want to have a closed table mm-hmm. and what that means is if you're not a member here, I don't, I can't offer really? you communion because you want to know that they understand. Um, well, if I'm gonna give an account, and if yeah. I believe in First Corinthians 11, people die. So you wouldn't like show me saying I've, that you're a Christian and I've just been make with sure my right? brother-in-law. I've been with my yeah. brother-in-law okay. who grew up in church, hey. and he's sitting there with his girlfriend. Oh, so they live together, mm. wow. and they pass the elements. Hey, if you're a Christian, and he thinks, well, I believe this stuff. Mm. I know where he's at, and even but even my he, warning of sin, you wouldn't say he he wouldn't he wouldn't have connected that would, that it. Wouldn't mm. You know what I mean? Because he's like, I believe the stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. It wouldn't have connected. Mm-hmm. My pastor did it and he took the, and he had the elements in his hands. And I, I told him, do not take that as I'm sitting next to him. Mm-hmm. Like, don't take that. And, and I think the best way to care for his soul, right. And, and the souls of the community, um, is to know that we're in honest fellowship in communion with each other. Um, and, and that's what common union looks like Yeah, is when we know like the guy who's in the foxhole with me, he'll mm-hmm. take that bullet. And I know when I'm sharing this table that we have faith in the same Jesus and not another Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like the table is a precious moment amongst believers. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you got a buddy who's not been there for three weeks, Mm -hmm. three months and you go, man, I love you. But Sunday night we have service and Mm -hmm. you haven't been here for four weeks. We, we pulled you off the the membership roster. You got to get back here. Let's have some conversations, figure out what's going on. Maybe there was a sickness. Maybe there's a job problem. We understand, but we called you. We reached out. We don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't hear for someone for four weeks, you know, like you could be on a bender, you have no clue what's going on. And they Mm -hmm. come into church ready to take the table. And you're like, man, like for your good, I don't want this for you. Yeah. Right. I don't want you to drink judgment on yourself. And, and yes, um, so there, when you, what scriptures you use for like membership? I mean, I mean, besides of I me, mean, I mean like taking the, the table rightly of first sure. Corinthians 11, but 
do you just is that kind of how you i mean is there because there's no thing of become a member i mean how what would you say would be some scriptures that would infer because yeah. you're basically saying the way i understand it is to really so you know they're taught yeah. This is what the sacraments mean. This is what this means, sure. right? That so they go through a membership class. Yeah, it's not um, just you sign a. Di- I mean, it's so they're they're trained. Yeah, technology is pretty great. I mean, the way that my church did it recently was they. Yeah, because they said people were waiting like six years to get a membership. Oh, before I don't they know. Did, that's yeah, what Matt before said. they did was, online stuff. We're so, and then they said we did because we were having people wait. Go, I want to be a member, but it's taken me four years. They clean the roster every year. The church mem- empties its membership every single year. Um, and what happens is if you were a member of the former year, you just, you re-sign and, and I'll explain why that is. And that's not, that sounds like, ah, that sounds weird. That sounds legalistic, but there's a reason and I'll explain it to you. Um, the next thing, um, when you, when you, when you want to become a member is, uh, they send you, uh, basically an e-course and you watch videos where they teach doctrine and they ask questions and you answer the questions. So they know that you're actually accountable to this. Mm -hmm. You write out your testimony, you submit it. An elder reads that testimony, and then you go to a public gathering where they talk about the church. They talk about some of their doctrines that they didn't cover in the video, and you're sitting there with a member of the church, and you share your testimony with that person so they can affirm that you are a believer in Christ mm. Jesus, right, before that they assume you into the membership. Well, in in, in the reason that their, their church membership is a thing for them is because again we're we're Baptist, and as Baptists we're congregational. Mm-hmm. Um, to vote in the church. You know, uh, again, First Corinthians uh, for church discipline, uh, when the unbeliever comes in, uh, or uh, Matthew 18, right? One comes and brings an accusation. Two comes and brings that accusation. Three, they were brought before the, the elders. church is what it church says in 18. Yeah. The whole church is the one who's supposed to execute church discipline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, who's going to do that? Is that what you get? Because, I mean, we always say Presbyterian, elder, but there's no church. Is that where you get? Well, uh, the church is ecclesia. It's the gathering, the community yeah. in, in Matthew 18. So just this is just one example yeah. for uh, church. So... Let's say the church gets to determine church membership okay, or uh, church discipline. So here's this person. They, they were caught in some kind of affair. And, okay, guys, we're going to vote. 30 people showed up from an outside movement. I have no clue who they are. Why do they get to say? Hmm. Who gets to say? Well, the church gets to say. The church gets to determine who's the church. Mm-hmm. we got to figure out who it is and who it isn't. That's really important, right? Yeah. So, so you know, hey, we're going to go uh, buy this building. We're all going to decide as a community. You know, as an elder, I can probably pull the trigger on this, but I want to know what my community says, thinks, feels. Well, who's my community? Who gets hmm. to say in that, right? And then, so so you've got the Matthew uh, Matthew 18 account, but, but additionally... So that's that's where you get... Because, like, you know, Calvary's big on... Sure. Not, you know, press either, you know, like you said, the mosaic, yeah. where it's like a mosaic... The, the kind Man of the press top, re- yeah, top the and then a press retreat. So you have your elders kind of like Chuck always said, sure. the train is the Moses, I'm like a- the mosaic. And then the elders of the track to keep you in line. Yeah. So it's both. But he would say... I mean, I'm not, he'd sure. say there is no congregational, you don't see that biblically, but you would say the Matthew 18 is sort of that. Matthew because, 18 would be one account. But because it's the thing of, you know, like, you know, legally people are always afraid when you do the Matthew 18 that you could be sued. That's why we signed a contract. I was going to, I was going to circle oh, okay, back. Okay, okay. The reason we sign is for defin- practically people, even though it's biblical, yeah. yep. they say like, pastors go, you can't do that because people could sue you. if you The reason we resign every year is for defamation laws mm-hmm. because church discipline is public. It was in the first so century. So you vote, you guys bring, so you bring, if someone's in a, so if a pastor's in adultery, they bring it for the whole church? It's public. For all the members? It's public, yeah. Wow. So. Because um, you don't see that very. I well, mean, that, but oftentimes yeah. the pastor leaves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you don't see the pastor again, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But the discipline is brought publicly. So it'll go out right. to the emails to the to the members. Uh, and often churches that run like our church, we brought up before the members meetings, um, you know, uh, Mark Dever, a man I greatly admire, wrote a book called Nine Marks. Um, again, greatly admire that book. And uh, he does church membership meetings on Sunday. So Sunday morning, he preaches, teaches. Sunday evening, I'm sorry, they do a time of worship. And then he does live Q&A. But then he also goes over the roster, okay? R- I say roster, it's not the right word, but the, the church membership list. And they say, okay, these are the people who haven't attended. Cool. These are people who are um, have been unfaithful biblically that we have to remove from membership. They're under church discipline, that kind of thing. And he, re, you know, and the church votes on that and they say, yep, that's what takes place. But here's, here's an argumentation. When Paul says purge the sexual moral from among you, who did he write that to? Did he write it to the elders or did he write it to the church of Corinth? Good. He wrote it to the church of Corinth. Mm-hmm. So he told the whole church, it's not your pastor's job to remove this person. It's your job as a community. You should have all identified this. Yeah, so 11, you, 11, yeah 11. you you all should you you all should have identified and recognized and fought for this. Yeah. So when we talk about church making decisions or church voting, it might be not as explicit but implicit. 
uh, to the church of Galatia. He said, have you started in the spirit? Now you're finishing in the flesh. Is he talking to a person or the church? And he's telling the church, fix your doctrine. But so, that's what, that's what crazy. You say that though, of just how unbiblical we are, because you know, like you say, yeah. you joke today, like, Oh, your pastor's like, I've got a hard, but I mean, don't judge. Like I just, even sure, our church, sure, sure. I, I just try not to judge. So I mean, that's hard. One of my teach said that where Paul says, I'm not to judge the unbeliever, but I'm to judge those inside the house, you know, inside yeah. the church. And it's like, but we go, Oh no, you know, kind of like bubble Christianity. I won't deal with your sin. You don't deal with mine, but we are to judge those inside the house. Little guy, you know, cause you asked, I, I, I don't know if you concur, but sure. I heard you know, stats or stats, but I heard the number one verse, you know, like 30 years ago was John three sixteen. Now it's judge not, it's, it's uh, Matthew yeah. 7, 1, you know, judge not lest you be judged. And it's like, yeah. yeah, but what did you say at 21 or was it 19? You'll know them by their fruit. Like we are not to judge for condemnation, but we're to judge for sure. fruit. Fruit inspectors mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm not going to say you're, you're going to hell, but I'm saying the Bible says fornicators should not inherit the kingdom of God. So as you, as you're walking right now, it doesn't look like you're saved because you're in, you're living with your girlfriend. That's not a whoops. That's continual. Right. So, yeah. you know, but I'm saying is you don't see that much because people go, I don't want to judge, you know, like, so to get a whole church, I mean, if you guys do, that's amazing. Cause I mean, I think we're pretty intense, but we usually would just do the, el even, though it's, even though it says the church, but we would just do the elders would, sure. would judge it. Cause we, you know, cause the, the law, I mean, I've seen church get go. sued and I'm not really worried about that so much, but I just, you know, to bring, because I would say, even though we teach the Bible, the whole council to, don't you think to bring our whole church to a judgment of someone in sexual sin, we well, could have some, we could have some, cause too, that they did that. Like, yeah. Cause I was, I was judging, the, I don't know. I don't want to get into the judgment, but I was judging that. something. And so there's just, a reason behind a guy that. in our church. He's a new, he's new. He's probably like, maybe he's been here like four months, but I was saying somebody goes, well, I just try not to judge brother. And I was trying to have, so I was, it was in the middle of between services. I didn't really have time to explain it, but, but that's kind of the consensus of yeah. most believers is, Hey, we just love. Let know? me, let me tell a couple of stories. Cause I think, I think it'll help frame this. Uh, a buddy of mine named Alan, uh, grew up in Texas when I was a part of the assemblies of God, I heard this story and it stuck with me forever. And I realized that people feel safe when churches confront sin. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I think that there's this lie that if we confront sin, people think we'll, we're like angry. <laughs> but no, people see that and they go, oh, it's a Christian. Okay, so my friend Alan uh, got busted. Mm -hmm. He uh, fell, He was a youth pastor, young. I don't know why we make 18-year-olds youth pastors, but, <laughs> but he was a young guy and he slept with a student, right? And I think she was a year younger than him, two years younger than him maybe. And she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And the pastor brought Alan and her on stage. He says, this is what happened. Alan's going to marry this girl and he's going to take care of her. Uh, he's been removed from the pastoral office here, um, but they're also going to stay in this church and get restored. Mm -hmm. And I don't want another word of gossip into this church about these two people. Yeah. We've exposed what has happened. It was wrong. Mm -hmm. They've repented. Four people joined the church mm -hmm. that Sunday. Mm -hmm. They were like, how do we join? Because mm -hmm. if this is a place where the word of God is rightly administered and there's real church discipline happen, because it's, it is, I'm telling you, I've been into, I've been, I have been in churches where pastors will preach against sin, but when the rubber hits the road and they're a big tither, oh, yeah. Yeah. there is oh. no confrontation yeah. of sin. Oh, yeah. you know, when, when it's sexual immorality, it might make the pastor feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They will, they'll, uh, they'll allot them to church membership and pass them communion. I've been in the churches. Yeah. I've been there. And when people see it, they actually see publicly, whoa, you know, this person denied the deity of Christ. They're no longer a member. They go, mm. whoa, they we're showing them again. You know, when you raise kids, I always tell, I, I tell people this, when you raise kids, the way you act is their software. Yeah. So if you get angry and you blow up, you're teaching them to blow up when they get angry. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so you are giving them their operating system. The local church is teaching people the operating system mm. of the Christian faith. Mm. And if we can show what confrontation of sin looks like, yeah. I love this person. They've fallen. We're going to restore them. Amen. It's not a secret. It's public. No one dropped their jaw. We don't shame this man. He's a brother. He loves Jesus. We're teaching them how to do that to their kids, yeah. Yeah. to their cousins, to their brothers. Like we have to show them how to, why don't you think, you know, sister Sue has been in the church for 20 years. Hasn't talked to her brother about sin. Mm. She doesn't know how to do it. She hadn't seen it. Mm. Yeah. She hadn't seen anybody confront it. So, so again, I think, I think church membership is beautiful. And I think even having excommunication, I think it's a beautiful thing. Cause yeah. I think we're teaching people yeah. how to do things in these microcosms. Yeah. What's well, funny is, I mean, you know, there's a story for every story, but cause we, we confront sin, but sure. you know, we confront sin pretty, but it's like, we're, I've, we had a, we had a worship leader. Uh, they were younger 
because we just started the church, so we kind of get what you, like Swindoll says, sometimes you have to not get the perfect elders at the beginning because you don't have a, sure. you kind of a low, yeah. you got to kind of build up. But uh, Paul did, what is the Philippians? He did three weeks, or I forget where he got the elders in three weeks with the Philippians. But um, he left them with elders. But anyway, but I confronted this because they were sleeping together. Well, I, the, the Lord showed me it, like yeah. a kind yeah. of a vision. So I confronted it. So they didn't come clean, yeah. and they are doing it for a year. And I kind of would sense sometimes something wasn't right, but they looked really outwardly really good. You know what I'm mm. talking about? And so I confronted them. And so I, they got caught. So it's yeah. not like, it's mm. a lot, a little more mercy, right? He could seal the sin without prosper. He could confess the redoxes will find mercy. It's yeah. like, so he got caught. So I was kind of frustrated, you know, that they were, and she, they would always talk about holiness. And once I watched Scooby Doo and they judged that as that's a bad show because it has mm -hmm. ghosts in it, you know, but yet they're fornicating. And I'm going, wow, really? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to nail a Scooby Doo watching that. But anyways, with the cartoon. So, um, but I confronted him. And so I said, you need it. You're going to be restored. And I, I did, I didn't tell the whole church. I'll say that, but sure. I told all the people in leadership. So everyone knew. So we're all good, but we, but it's funny. So they kind of lawyered up and got this kind of church mama who was from the other big Calvary came over. And she said, mm. that's too harsh. You can't do that. And I go, well, last time I checked, I'm I'm the pastor here. <laughs> so I well, said, well, you're the pastor. But I mean, and they and she and they laughed at church and they went yeah. to other because the other Calvary doesn't deal with it. But I mean, it was like I got shredded and a lot of people left because they thought six months of stepping down and just serving. I said, you're not going to be any leaders. You're going to help. They were worse. So I said, you're going to set up because we were portable. We were in a school. You're going to set up, but you're not. You're just going to be restored. We're going to meet every week. The church and did. they shredded. They I got shredded by. Like, Probably lost 10 people. Church membership would have protected you from that yeah, because in the front end, one. you would have explained to them, yeah. if you fall into sin, if you are in unrepentant sin, this is what so we do. you have all that written out? No, we, we explain it in membership, and that's what people sign to, is they sign to Matthew 18, obedience to Matthew 18, mm -hmm. if they're caught in sin and unrepentant. Mm -hmm. do, you, again, do you have a sign like they won't sue you or if you well, do that's, confront? Yes, that's in the, that's, that's in the membership. Okay. So so mm -hmm. because, again, they're, they're willfully submitting. Mm -hmm. to that yeah. so and, so, they, and they clearly understand it yeah, yeah. for for us Hopefully. like you you want to you, you don't have to expose everyone's sin like let's say they had an affair i don't have to stand up on on stage and announce that to the church i don't have to do that matthew 18 says i have to confront them privately but then like says it, those if, in leadership to kind of but if they don't repent right. right then i go and i take someone else yeah. mm. and then if they don't no, repent then, go then it goes the to the church, church yeah. right so it's not like hey yeah. you know i saw you at the store you flipped that guy off you know excommunication right mm. like it's like we're not just running to excommunication for everything yeah. we confront people righteously first Amen. right um but but then we move down that line now there are some more egregious sins that especially when it's in leadership, yeah, they get, first, they're removed first, from leadership. So the fear of God will be right. Yes. Yes. Rebuke publicly before also. So the rest in in fear. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, is required. Um, uh, so there are times where like, Hey, the kid comes and confesses pornography or confesses mm -hmm. some kind yeah. of uh, sin that I don't want to make it minor. No. Right. But it's, it's not the kind of thing that God destroyed Sodom for. Yeah. Right. You know, like th there are definitely different sins in God's eyes and there are definitely people who live with different measures of repentance as well. I do want to also bring up the fact of like, even when I was talking about how, I believe, like God's sovereign, so he'll just bring the person to you and like that yeah, 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 yeah. backtracking. I believe that. I want to say, though, I'm saying it's your motive. Like, if that's all you're doing, like, I think it's totally fine. Like, that's how my dad met sure. my mom. He was at this conference thing and she was selling books. And it wasn't like he was going there like, oh, I got to find my wife and like looking all around. Right. Like, I give it up on but, it. I said, I'm done. But God worked it out. Like, he yeah. found her at a different church that wasn't his and it was her church and God worked it out. But um, when you see young adults, like that's their stress in life is like, I have to go to this conference. I right. have to go to this thing because there's like good looking young adults and do that. I would just say that's where I think that's the unrest and thinking like God wouldn't just bring someone where you're serving. I think that's yeah. the most beautiful. The stories yeah. I've seen is where you're serving and that person sees you and they're like, whoa, like that yeah. person. It's not like, but I do think, right, for guys, can I, can I'm not I say, saying I gotta say, I gotta to say not. That with that. But we talked about the, the different, like, I won't say the denomination, but it was your sure. denomination. So my wife was there, but it took some, now she was willing to come follow me, but, but it's, that's but, I, too, but it took years to undo doctrine. the doctrine sure. like you came out of. That's and so hard. it really, you know, so I always say to people, so you can steal someone from another tribe, but, but realize sure they might, they, they might want to bring you there and you might, yeah. you know, especially yeah. if you're a man, you got to kind of go, you want someone who's kind of in your vein because it's kind of sometimes hard to, you know, they might go, no, I like my I vein, like you know, cause if not, praise God, my wife kind of. 
wanted to move more to where I was. But I mean, if, you know, I think sometimes we've seen people where like, we knew, whoa, we knew of one girl that just told me like where a guy, and you know, a lot of these times people come to big churches, they'll tell, like we had this Hispanic guy said, go to a, go to a church to find your woman. Well, all of a sudden you find a woman and then all of a sudden they're married like three months. And he goes, I'm not a Christian. You know, he basically just married her, pretend to be a Christian for Because they're also even a while. warping disciples. I mean, that's just crazy. No I mean, they, they, they had been there a year. So it's like sure. they faked it pretty hard. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Yeah, it's, I'm it's glad one I'm of those. Married, that's all I can say. It's one of those things where, mm-hmm. you know, you mentioned calling down the road. It's a big deal, man. I, yeah. I mean, and yeah. that's 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 something that I, I always I said if you're not a member here, you don't take the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if you came with a letter or some kind of contact, knowing, hey, I'm going to this church. Here's my elder said that I'm in right standing with my church. I have an orthodox profession. Yeah. I'd offer you the table in a heartbeat because yeah. it's not about being. Um, it's not you don't have a superiority complex, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. Because th- this needs to be motivated by love for my brother. No. Um, and you're right. Like we shouldn't. We shouldn't go to church. Um, we shouldn't go to church to find marriage, right? But there's nothing wrong in looking for marriage. Yeah. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's those kinds of like that's a nuanced kind of way of saying it because it's like the one who, you know, burns and lust, mm-hmm. go get married. Paul says, <laughs> right? And if you're looking around, I wouldn't say that's his idea. And I mean, it's like, like yeah. if you're burning, okay, yeah. But, I mean, it's like saying, you know, I mean, we should walk in self control, right? But I feel right, like right, those right. are the scariest guys to girls where they know that <sighs> they're going to churches yeah. because sure. they're doing like that's more of a predator, I think it looks like. But I think that yeah. uh, what the most attractive thing for a girl is if a guy is firmly planted in the place sure. he's at. Stability, I, would, yeah. I, wouldn't marry, need, yeah. I wouldn't marry someone who wasn't faithfully committed That's to a local saying. church. Hundred percent. And when you're talking about membership, yeah, you think you want them kind of agree yeah. with your creed, right? Yeah. You don't want to be like some weird. You're going to raise your kids in that like you together. Said, there's a lot of churches that don't care about communion. They don't care about yeah. sin. They don't care about if you're. Holiness. They think you'll be a homosexual Christian. Right? The average I mean, church in America is eighty people. Yeah. Okay. And if you're nineteen and like. A good eighty percent of your church is grayheads. Like, where are you gonna? <laughs> hey, where are you gonna? Them, buddy. I'm, hey, hey, look, come on, bro, come on. I'm halfsies myself. Like okay, I'm just saying, like, you're not you're gonna. Good looking. You're not looking to be like fruitful and multiply, yeah, yeah. like mm-hmm. in that space. Yeah. Like, that's just that's just where the rubber hits the road. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we can we can pray and fast that like, you know, uh, you know, a husband or Bring wife will fall down. like manna from heaven. You know, yeah. but again, simultaneously, there is. I wouldn't want to place an unfair law upon yeah. people yes. that the scriptures don't exactly. and say, look, man, if you can say honestly before God that your heart is committed to this local body, that yeah. you're here to love and exercise your gifts to the edification of the body, Amen. sacrificially laying your life down for people as you pick up your cross and follow Jesus, that that you know, you're living in that kind of communal unity. And then on Thursdays, you want to go to a singles group across town to meet someone who's your age go for it. Like, I don't, I don't find anything sinful there. I do think if you're going to church so that you can marry someone that has good ethics, that's a problem, Yeah. right? That's wrong. That's not, Mm -hmm. that shouldn't be why you go to church. Mm -hmm. You should go to church and submit to a local church because you love Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to be very clear in that. Yeah. And then with that, I would say too, like for me, (laughs) I could find pretty girls. Sure. And I could find girls that said love Jesus, but a lot of girls didn't want ministry. They were like, I don't want to, it's too much work. It's too much hassle all the time. You're, you know, your pastor's wife yeah. or once. And so it's really took time to really make sure like to kind of interview, like for, like you said, membership to say, are you cool with this? And if there wasn't that kind of took the already small pool of, you know, our church was big, but it just narrowed it because very few women that I met really wanted full-time ministry. They, they liked the prestige of marrying a pastor, yeah. but they didn't want to have to deal with the, you know, because ministry is pretty much 24-7. It's not like you get sure. to check out. And so, you know, most girls said, yeah. um, I'm cool with marrying you, but I don't know if I want to be in the ministry. And I said, well, you know, so that, that's so serious... I think you really need to, you know, like you yeah. said, because you want ministry, you want, I mean, you're in ministry, but you want to be a pastor, Lord willing, someday. Yes. Yeah. That's a whole different calling. But I think, I guess the thing I would say, not a law, but is just make sure if you're going to go fish somewhere else, Make sure they're willing to come in your stream, yeah. especially if you're a man. Yeah, because right? you're going to be the priest of your home. You don't want to you fish to, anything you, in salt water. If you yeah, you don't want fresh water. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, yeah. just not compatible. You, don't, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You just yeah. want to really make sure that they're going to be, and they're not going to pull you to somewhere sure. you're going. I, I really, because like, if my wife tried to pull me to her church. It wouldn't have happened. Yeah. I mean, we'd be, we'd be going to two different churches. So praise and Matthew God, six thirty three you know. is kind of thrown around so much, but just because it says seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all these things. I think people, and I've been 
guilty of this is think, oh, that's all I have to do is just, but I feel like I'm saying this for the guys out there. I think that it's saying seek first, not saying not seek at all. Like you can't just say, well, I'm just going to get a job. It's just going to land right in front of me. Like that could happen. It's like saying I'm not going to eat breakfast. I'm going to let breakfast be presented to exactly. me. I'm going to seek first the kingdom until the like French toast fall. appears, you know, exactly. like, no, so, but It'll, seek first. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. then yeah. if you were, I, lo I love the direct, bat, so I say you know. to Calvinist friends, cause you know, you know, it's like, it's all God. Right. But it says Philippians two twelve says, Work out your own salvation for your own trembling. Sure. So we're gonna. Now I don't know why Paul didn't put reverse it, but the second part is uh, thirteen is it's God who works us to willing to do according to His good yeah. pleasure. So it's God, right? We didn't yeah. initiate it; He initiated, but we yeah. respond. Now Cal say, "No, you didn't. You just it was just forced upon you. He dragged you in, kicking, and screaming." But we don't we don't believe that. But that's at least I don't believe that. But it's like that's you 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 know God works us to willing to do, but then we have to work out what He's led us to do, Amen. right? We have yeah. to walk by the Spirit. But it's like, like I said, like you said, though, I will say for the, 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 the Matthew 6 or 3, is that I had kind of given up. You know, I read the verse. I was like 30, almost 32. I said, you know, some are eunuchs by birth, some are eunuchs by choice. You can take it. I'm, I'm out. Like, I'm done. I'm done looking yeah. for a woman. And then as soon as I kind of gave up, you know, yeah. how God kind of works that way, once you let it go, then all of a sudden, like I said, I was doing an interview with uh, Rich Wilkerson, you know, the, the weird yeah. dude. So I was, well, I was inter interviewing the old dad or the uncle, the dad, anyway, the dad, and I went and got really there, rich. so I'm just doing an interview for my show, I had, like you, so I go see him, and, and then that's when I met my wife, so she was doing, selling his books, cool. so I just was like, and she was sex. like, yeah, Wait, I bought like, I bought 20 this is Dave Wilkerson's, mm, uh, Rich no, Wilkerson is, 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 you know, is his uh, nephew, and then Rich Wilkerson Jr., is like okay. a new thing, it was yeah. his dad, it was Dave Wilkerson's Senior. nephew. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So anyway, but I mean, I'm saying I just interviewed him. I had no, I wasn't looking. Yeah. I was at a church. I don't like their doctrine, mm -hmm. right? They'd asked me to be a youth pastor many times. Nope. And, uh, but God just, and then just people were like, she digs you, man. I'm like, she likes you. And like, she's been, people always try to, you know, so it was like God literally threw her. And I always joke and say, if it's God, you really, it's really hard to mess it up because I, yeah. I could always say I did everything to yeah. stop it. Like you say, blow it up. Like, why do you like me? There must be something wrong with you. <laughs> like what to Michael said, Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miller. Mm -hmm. but I was saying, you know, you concur, yeah. but I mean, it's like, but God worked it out. And so yeah. I really do believe if you're mm -hmm. seeking first a wife, I think you're going to be in trouble. But if you seek first the kingdom of God and really say, I want a godly wife and I trust you, but I'm going to do my part. Then God will what bring a wife. Biblical submission would save you a lot of heartache. Yep. Amen. You know, you, you go and you meet a girl, um, you love her, you think she's sound, you bring her before your elders, you talk some stuff out, you do some investigation, you do some premarital counseling. Right. This will save you a heartache, man. It'll yeah. save you a lot. Yeah, because you hear people like online, they were saying in Christian sites, I think, that like 60, was it Kevin saying 60 to 7% of people are saying, I think it's fine to fornicate as long as you're kind of committed a little bit yeah. like it's fine well, without marriage to have sex these sure. are christian sites sure 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 yeah yeah, yeah well insane. i mean i think i think when you look at even like a doctrinal unity may sound like nothing because we mm. think that we agree with people before we get married and then we get married and we realize oh, um, oh yeah, exactly. yeah. you know and and what you want to do is you want to have those conversations on the front end and sometimes you don't even know what conversations to have mm. and those kinds of elders to get in there like hey what do you guys both think about critical race theory? Like, mm. I didn't think to bring that up, you know? Yeah. What do you guys both think about raising your children? Oh, I'll never spank. My dad beat us mm. as a yeah, kid, yeah. you know? And then you have the other one who's like, well, my parents spanked and I turned out fine, yeah. right? You know, it, it's like, well, that's a serious thing. <laughs> oh. Who's going to submit before yeah, yeah, we make a lifelong yeah, covenant, yeah. right? Well, I want no kids and I want to have six kids. You know, it's like, whoa, right? we got to work that. So it's just, it's just it's things like that. Yeah doctrinally, faithfully, that will save you a lot of heart. And you would concur, I'm sure, that when you bring sex into the mix, then now you're, like you said, you're not, better. Think, you're not think. no, what I'm saying. Oh, oh. Before, you, no, no, before, no, no, no. <laughs> I rebuke you in the name of that. On record. No, it's marriage, way better. Yeah. No, but yes. I'm saying, if you're dating, I'm and then you're bringing too. sex into it, no. yeah. then you're not going to no. think straight because now you've released the dope, the, what the, the dope dopamine means, yeah. all the yeah. things and all the, you're just making, you're the dope, yeah, you're bringing the dope, which is like heroin, he said, which makes you not think straight, and now you're thinking emotionally, you're not thinking, like you said, asking the hard questions to go, I need to kind of guard my heart a little bit because I don't know if you really believe what I believe or believe what's biblical and I need to be able to say you know maybe I mean you're hot I think you're sexy but you're not godly and I need to probably say you know and you make way yeah. too much eye contact with me when you say you're Whoa. hot and sexy I'm not <laughs> well, getting a little uncomfortable yeah. I do think this is actually really cool is this quote by C.S. Lewis it was in the book The Four Loves and he was talking about this as why it's important to like be friends with someone and doing 
with that because the sad thing is nowadays we're just trying to like find like a person that maybe is compatible we have our enneagram like all this works right. out like all these weird stuff Team but beliefs. it really you you can't really when you see that person you're serving and ministry with them they can't really hide as much we've had pastors and this is why this is really big for me is like this calvary pastor that we know in phoenix his mm. daughter he oh, let wow. marry the youth pastor that was just there for maybe six months not even a year and all of a sudden um he was just Hardcore deep into pornography Doing and that in front of her in front of her blatant and, and so that i guess i think he left her actually because he wasn't willing to give it up and so that crushed the pastor after that he was like i can't even trust myself now like i let my daughter like Mary, yeah, like we, he was we were like best friends. I mean, he was a church totally of 14,000 people and he was just treating, Hey was buddy, so you know, just like, it was the coolest, biggest pastor I've ever seen. It was just like, see us. And then mm -hmm. I see him, I go like, because after he encourages his time, I go, her I go, I go Hey, him. how you doing? I better say his name. I say, Hey pastor. And he go, Hey, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I literally go, do you remember me? Right. He goes, yeah. But it's like, he's devastated. I mean, just, he's not, he's, not, he's like, that. he's had a stroke. I mean, it was just devastating because he couldn't believe that because his girls were virgins. They were yeah. kind of homeschools who were kind of sheltered yeah. and just like, he felt like he just threw, threw him to a wolf. And I think and that's back to what I say. And I know you're probably gonna like it, but I think too, when you get so big and he was doing the multiple campuses and I go, sure. and that's the guy I say, cause you know, I'm such a loving guy. Right. Sure. But I said to him, I said, I'm joking, but I said, bro, why you have 14,000 people. You really can't raise up another person to take this other campus. I don't have a problem with that. I and said, you, bro, to be I said, clear. I said, because he was, he was like, at least the guy here, Calvary here, he does, yeah. he goes back and forth to both sites. Sure. So he's at least there. Yeah. You know what I mean? In a sense. But I mean, he was just doing the, the you know, streaming it. And I'm just like, the way I picture it, because I'm kind of visual, I think you're visual, right? Sure. But I mean, I see it as like, you, you have this TV and you have your sheep and there's wolves <laughs> and they're like, get away. You know, it's like the wolf kind of knows and not that you have campus pastors, but you know, it's not the same as, you know, cause a lot of times let's be real. People do want to talk to their pastor. They do want to talk yeah. to the head dude at least once in a while. And you know, like I told you, Chuck Smith said, if your ministry is bigger than one-on-one -on -one ministry, you're, you're greater than Christ. Cause even Jesus met with, you know, people want, if yeah. they waited, he would meet with them. And so anyway, yeah, I think, Aww. man, we, we kind of went off there. But. No, no, no. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, you know, it, with the with the church size thing, I I will not defend that big church is better church. I won't mm -hmm. defend it. I don't think it. Well, you're not Andy Stanley. Where I, I don't. See all these little churches stealing all the resources from the big. Did you hear that? Yeah, no, he I didn't said, hear that. Oh, but yeah, he did I it. Everyone went nuts. He was like, he's basically saying church like this. They suck the people that waste resources because if there was bigger churches, we could have a lot better community. Sure. Yeah, and again, that's to say I can offer a better commodity, mm -hmm. right? I can auto offer better. Uh, amenities yep. right like better speakers you can have better sp soap in the bathroom the kids can pick <laughs> three different snacks instead of having goldfish every yeah, sunday right. you know like yeah. what are we talking about here yeah. you know yeah. um yeah I, so I, I don't typically care for that i mean i've never heard the quote so i'm just going off what you said yeah. uh with no, it was said it was said trust me oh i believe you, i believe you. i don't i don't disbelieve it yeah, i just shredded. just saying uh, this is my initial thoughts to it um with with i'm not saying big church is is good church but i won't say big church is bad church no. either no. i think again the church of ephesus but if, you better manage like you said you better like membership yep. and you membership. better manage it well and yep. try to have community like groups or home group go, to where people are known right yep because yeah. if you're if you can slam bam small it you know, in and out burger groups. where you got in and like you said like you said you're even kind of i don't know if i can say yep. it probably but you're struggling with like you have a great church but maybe not the community you would want you need to be honest with that well, and you need yeah but you but i'm saying is that is the negative of a big church is it's a lot harder for them to manage all the sheep. The only reason would you agree? Would you agree? I yeah, mean, the, I think hard. I think reason not you can't, I, but it's hard. What I brought up beforehand, so people understand exactly where I'm at. Is I'm not reformed. It's never been a secret. I, when I started at the village day one, they told me, "Hey, we're a reformed community. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't lead here if you're not reformed." Yeah. And I feel called to lead. So we needed a, a healthy place for my wife and kids to go when we left our church and I knew right. the village could be that for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Matt's I, a solid teacher. So I, sure. I, I was like, this is it. But I, I never had any um, grandiose idea that I was going to be on staff there. Or I was going to pastor there. I always knew it was off the table. And now, I mean, it's been two years. I've got an itch. I want to pastor again. Yeah. I, I feel called to do that. And, and it's not going to be my forever church um, because I know what God's called me to do. Um, and I think that's an, that's an acceptable thing yeah. to go. I need a place where where my wife can hear the gospel every morning, where we can take the table together, where we can worship Jesus with like minded believers. It's an important thing. Yeah. Have you ever tried? I mean, I don't mean to kid into a weird thing. Sure. But have you ever tried to talk to 
mad about why they couldn't because like chuck would allow people to have sure. different beliefs he said now yeah. like like end times which your joke said were, sure. were different but he would say okay you can believe like mid-trib or say let's just say or all but just know that you say if you teach sunday school that you say this is what they this is the position what we church. believe but this is what i sure. believe as long as you clearly say this is what the church believes that they he would allow that diversity well as long as it wasn't unbiblical i mean he exactly. would say something yeah. like end times you could agree to disagree i, I want to consider matt a friend yeah I've got no reason to push that friendship. Yeah. He's got oh, a lot of people. That would, that would push he's it. got a lot of people who, who are asking favors. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'm just and saying. Just, to me, it's like I'm just going. No. It's like it's to me. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're reform, it's not. It, but to me, it's agree to disagree. It's like yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Me too. Me too. I just I just don't you know because he seems like such a knowledgeable, yeah. reasonable guy that he go. I'd you hire know, reform you're, guys. You're, you're a solid pastor. guy. You're solid sure. biblically. But you just because. But it seems like because I, I heard Paul Washer say really good. We're all about soteriology. That's our thing. But we got to realize that scriptura, or, uh, what is it, spill scriptura, that really we're being reformed to the scriptures. Right. We're not reformed to Calvinism. Mm-hmm. We're reformed to always be changing mm-hmm. and growing in areas where we can scripture to be reshaped into yeah. the form of, and I thought that was really cool to say it isn't just soteriology. It isn't just the book of Rome. And this is Paul Washer. Yeah. This isn't just, we don't, you got to read more than just Romans and Ephesians. It's, yeah. there's, you got to read the whole concept. And I thought, that's why I love him as a reformed guy because he's like, he kind of spanks his own. Yeah. Like, saying dude there's more than just you know anyway now, i said i only said that because i want to be very clear i love yeah. my church there's yeah. nothing wrong with my church well, i'm not done. i'm just pastor. saying but it but i think we need like i tend to be an argument of sure i, mean, I, I just know that sound bite was sent to my elders yeah. and i want yeah, to be yeah. very clear <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I'm good. Okay. this is craig I love my, I love my jerk, community <laughs> yeah this guy said it i didn't say nothing i think we have to like end times i tease you about like oh we don't believe it you're like you know but i'm just saying is i think we need to agree on the essentials right if you say jesus is a way we're gonna have a problem but if you say hey i believe in all or i believe in mid or your post. eschatology we or to disagree. that's not yeah. you know or i believe one saved always saver i believe you can depart mm-hmm. i don't think we should separate no. but i think when someone says to me the scripture is, is fallible and and, and and there's many ways to god then i'm going to probably say you're not a brother i'm going to fellowship i yeah, mean i'm going to break i'm going to say Amen. i agree to disagree yeah. and yeah, I don't you're not hang. you're not going to take i don't think you're going to take the table i think you, you can you can hang out here as long as you want you can worship with us yeah. you can pray with us but you're not going to be exercising any gifts exactly. you're not going to be taking the table um, you're not gonna be serving in our local community in any meaningful yeah. way, um, I, probably any way. Period. Does it, now? Can I ask this to be weird? But just yeah. so, can we, does it seem like? Because I've seen that. Like I told you, the principal, my friend, who's a principal, he had to become reform to take the job. Does that seem to be a reform? Like if you are in a reform community or church or school, you have to believe that, or you can't. They won't allow someone like you to be there, even though you're solid. I don't biblically. think I can be a Calvary Chapel guy. Because I'm not pre-trib. I don't really I'd let you, hold I, to a senior, I would let senior you. Elder. I would let you be. I would think. I don't know. I, I let yeah. you be it. I would just say you need to at least teach or know what we believe and just gen- and not try to undermine and go, okay, Craig's an idiot. Here's what we, no, here's no, what no. smart people believe. But if you, but I would, no, I would say I would. I, if I, I talk, was going to be the senior pastor yeah. of a Calvary church, oh. is what I'm saying. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like if I was going to pastor a yeah. Calvary but, church. But there, no, there, no, there's a lot of there's Calvary. A lot of Dove, man. Calvary's getting, there's no, Calvary is pretty. Maybe in the Chuck days, but now Calvary's okay. pretty. There's some trust. Me, there's there's well, Calvary. There's Calvary Calvinist. Chuck is sure. Uh, so so I mean, there's. Calvary but but I only meant to say that to say that every denomination says conform or go away. Mm. Right. That's what a denomination is. Right. The assembly the says Calvary's if you don't have second blessing and initial physical yeah, really evidence, not kick rocks. Yeah. You know what I mean. But I would say what I would say, and I think I've lived it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been in ministry forty years, but sure. I've been a senior pastor for twenty. I would say, as long as it's not clearly unbiblical, I agree Amen. to disagree. Yeah, I, and I would say I'm with you. I would I say, and I would. I, I mean, I guess maybe senior. That's a little different because if you're, Cal- but Calvary's pretty loose now. We don't even know what we are. I mean, who's who's the head of Calvary? There's no head of Calvary now. Well, I would say like like there. Are, I would have essentials that I would want people to follow if I was going to pastor like the gifts. You're not going to be a cessationist here teaching. That's mm-hmm. not going to happen. I'll, I'll offer you the table. Yeah. You'll be a brother, but you're not going to lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um. You know. Uh, I guess. I guess I just don't see that. That's I mean, not an essential to me. Because if you're chosen, you, you should say it's sad you're not chosen. Right, right, right. <laughs> when it comes <laughs> to like complementarianism, yeah. I'm a complementarian, yeah. yeah. you know, and that's a that's a that's a closed-handed issue to me. I go, you know, like culture, your pastor, Egal. <laughs> yeah, no, I love Egal. The, the, those, yeah. those, the the world right now. Like if there was a message that the world needs to hear, it's that boys and girls are different. Amen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's. <laughs> that's we have people. We have a Trish on the road that wouldn't even. They said, "Why are you letting your daughter prophesy?" Yeah. 
I said, if she's under her cover, yeah, I said, if she's under my cover, if she starts squacking off something weird, I'm going to spank her little bottom. I'm going to tell her, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) You know, I mean, that sounds a little weird, but you know, I'm going to say, what are you doing? That's right. But I mean, they don't even want a girl up on the stage singing, doing worship. This one guy, ever that? And said, and he goes, why is she prophesying? I go, because the Bible says, well, but do you really think that's wise? And I go, it's been, you know, no, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, with you. I'm not. I'm not ridiculous. But I mean, I like yeah. I, the other day. I actually, I think I said, well, if you need prayer, the pastors will help you, Mariah. And I go, whoa, whoa, Mariah's not a pastor, but she's the head of the women's ministry. Yeah, yeah. And you can, but I had corrected it. But I by accidentally said pastors, and I threw yeah. women go to her. But I yeah, yeah, said, yeah. whoa, she's not. She's the director of women. She's the women. And I don't have a problem calling women's pastor, but Calvary freaks out on that. Sure, because she's a as long as she's just pastor sure. of women. But uh, yeah. So anyway. But no man, I get all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. we went way past. Yeah, time. we do it. We so, do it. He's, he's a genius. We got, got the it. We got to get you a lot. Yeah. So I got to suck everything out of you. And we're you didn't get to talk today. We're gonna do a big conference pretty soon here, right? We're gonna That'd do be the, cool. I'll be down. First, we're gonna do the. Yeah. And Joshua guarantees healings. Know. Everyone will get healed and uh, wow. everyone's going to wow. speak in tongues. No, yeah. yeah, first, 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 I'm first I'm running from my church because of discipline. And then yeah. uh, the I'm going to drive, I'm gonna drive I've, you to do something. But I promise healing to realize, everyone. Gonna, no, I'm going to get run out of town. That's embarrassing. Uh, All right. But do you have any closing thoughts or anything you'd like to share? No. Pray yeah, for yeah, you're not allowed to talk. No, I, 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 prayer. I, any closing thought would just be you're robbing yourself of transformation and actual intimacy with Jesus by not submitting to a local church. Amen. So find a community that you can live in faithful dependency of and faithful service to um, so that you can be edified as an individual. The body can be edified and Christ can be glorified. Mm-hmm. Um, and to not do that is to live a life um, just, um, I don't say subpar, you, you can never be all that you could be Amen. if you lived in submission to a local church. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, I'm sorry, I have to have the done. last word on Milgram. <laughs> but I think, think about it. We just did the, the foot washing thing, which I don't really dig washing feet. I sure. never got into that. I never see it much after Jesus. But, but as, as he said, as I've, you know, as your teacher and uh, what is it, Lord, I forget King James messed up, but uh, master, if I'm your teacher and Lord, how much more should you wash feet? And then he says, if you do these, I think verse 17, you'll be blessed. So that's like you said, the yeah. way, you know, people always say, I'm not getting fed or I'm not sure. getting any, but what did Jesus say? My meat is to do well the father. Well, what did Jesus say? The meat is serve others as I've served you. Amen. That's how you, that's how you grow. That's, serve that's, together. that's how you mature. That's how you be blessed and happy yeah. is you serve others. And if you're just watching podcasts, I mean, like you said, it's great supplement. Sure. It should always encourage people to get in a church, right? It yeah. should be, you know, you teach on a really cool topics, but you need to be known. You need someone to rub up, you know, because not everyone can meet you because sure. you're busy, right? And mm-hmm. but it's like we need the local body. Yeah, and even though cool. it might not be as sexy as some of the guests you have, or probably, but we need that. Con- we need that iron sharpens iron. We need to spur one another on. We need yeah. someone that can speak in. And I think there's a real blessing to that. I mean, even though, yeah. I mean, it's I, I really love. You know, like I, I would say this: if you said to me, okay. you can have a church of twenty thousand people make five times your salary and give up this church, I would keep this church because I just, it's a community. It's a fam- family. I'm closer to this body than I am to a lot of my flesh and blood family. Yeah. So that's just, you couldn't, I, you couldn't pay me any amount of money Amen. to pull me out of this. You know, and I've, Amen. like I said, I've been in big churches, but I just love that we really have, you know, I mean, you see, I don't know if you saw it with my wife, my wife, for those who don't know, have has cancer, but you can see, I mean, half the body is around yeah. her just crying and ministering. And so that you don't see that in a big church. A lot of people don't know. They don't know people that intimately, you know, yeah. to be there. Yep. Amen. Anyway. All right. Well, Joshua, you want to close us, us in prayer? In prayer? Sure. Yeah. Father, um, thank you for Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yeah. And thank you for um, entering into a marriage covenant with your people. Mm. And Lord, uh, I never want to treat it as common, um, but it's a holy and chaste version. Mm. Uh, Lord, I ask, uh, I ask that you would purify your bride. Yes, Lord. That you would give us, uh, you give us ministers who would hold high standards for their churches, um, so that they're worthy of chasing those standards, worthy of of admiration, worthy of our effort. Um, and God, I ask that you'd give just a heart of purity to the body, mm. um, not to do what's easy, not do what's convenient. The, the prayer of Israel 
Lord, we want a king. We want a king. We want a mm. king. Um, and he took their land and their their children, their finances, their property. Mm. Um, and we say, oh, you know, we want the church down the road. We want to be like them. We want to mm. be like them. God, just give us a give us a heart to do things the way you've called us to do things. Yes, right. Have us fresh eyes at the scriptures and look mm. again. Um, and hold ourselves bare before the word and ask ourselves the hard questions. Is this biblical? Mm. And and how can I obey this text? Am I obeying this text? Um, because, and again, not for some sense of embitterment, not so sense of pride, mm. but so that your bride can be everything you've called her to be. Um, and as elders, God, give us grace. Uh, those who are watching that may be elders, let them give them grace um, to walk with sheep gently uh, and to speak truth boldly. Um, and for your body, Lord, I just ask that we would teach us to, to mutually submit to one another and live a life of openness and honesty. Uh, before Christ and before his community. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, thank Thanks, you bro. for joining us, Joshua. And thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us or ever get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. Thank you so much to our sponsor, Mission Heating and Cooling. Please make sure to check out their website in the description below. Thanks so much and God bless.